You've joined me here at Solar and Storage Live. We've traveled all the way to here from Manchester. So SIG Energy stand at the NEC in Birmingham. So I can give you a deep dive and tell you things that even I don't know about the Sygen store. There's some juicy new features and we're gonna find out all about them. Let's roll. You've joined me here at the SIG Energy stand where I've got the Sygen store in front of me. Now, just as a bit of a recap for the people that didn't watch our full deep dive on the YouTube video, which you will be able to watch. This is the energy controller, the inverter, and this is a single phase unit, uh, this in front of me here. The single phase are available essentially from three to 12 kilowatt versions. And the three phase versions are available from five all the way up to a new 30 kilowatt controller. We then have battery packs that are stacked up below and they can be either wall mounted or floor mounted. Uh, today, we're gonna to be going through with Lewis, who's one of the directors of SIG Energy here in the UK, who's carved out a little bit of his day to go through a little bit more of all the things you need to know about the bi-directional EV charger, which can essentially take power from your car and deliver it to your home, so you don't need to buy as many batteries. We're also going to be going through this new uh, micro inverter that SIG Energy have brought out for those people that have already maxed out their inverter and want to add a couple more panels, perhaps have complex shading, and we're going to be going through all the things you need to know about the all new gateway. There's a couple of new cool features that's going to be a part of it, including a nice neat cover to hide any of the cables to make it look that a little bit more aesthetic. Then after I've interviewed Lewis, I'm going to be telling you about Shelley devices. You might be thinking, What's a Shelley device and how does it work? This could save you a fortune on your hot water bills. And if you're thinking of getting a SIG Energy Sygen store, then that's something you're really gonna wanna know about. It's a really cheap part that could save you literally hundreds of pounds on your hot water bills. Let's go. Now, I know on a previous video, I referred to it as Sige Energy because I'd been corrected previously and it's all getting a bit confusing. So first of all, Lewis, as a director of SIG Energy, could you confirm, is it SIG or is it Sige? Stig Energy. Stig Confirm. Energy. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, we got it wrong on the last occasion. It's fine. So I, I got uh, it wrong in the beginning <laughs> as well, so it's okay. Um, okay. So we've gone through a few of the features of the Stig Energy Sygen store. So could yeah. you start by just walking the viewers through all the things they need to know about the brand new gateway that's going to be available with the Sygen store? Yeah. The new gateway will be the, the Gateway Home Pro SPF. Some of our installers and users are familiar with the Home Max. We are upgrading that to the Home Pro SPF. Some small changes, you will have the same capabilities of off-grid, but now we are adding a bypass for the gateway. A decorative cover to cover for, for the cable entries, aesthetics. IP protection has been upgraded to 55. The okay. previous gateway were 54. Both can be installed outdoors, but I understand clients in the UK are a little bit more concerned given the type of weather, so we have upgraded that to IP55 for that reason. And then you also have a 125 amp breaker. The, the amperage has been upgraded as well. So you can feel very comfortable on doing full home backup for single phase. And the same will be for the, the three phase version of the gate, the new okay. gateway. So from the user's perspective, a bypass switch, would I be right in saying that that would be a scenario whereby, let's say we had an issue with the Sygen store, the users could effectively go, okay, well, I need to get the power back on. They could effectively bypass that, so you could automatically bypass any of the functions. Is, is that what it's Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just to bypass the gateway in case there is, there is an issue with it. Okay, so let's move on to bi-directional EV charging, which I think is a really exciting technology yes. that's available now. We've done our first um, bi-directional EV charger, but I think a few other things are unclear in terms of which cars are available, because this changes like all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm aware they come in two specs, a 12 kilowatt and a 25, and they come in three lead lengths, five, seven and a half, and 10, is, yes. is that right? So tell me, why would somebody choose a bi-directional EV charger over going for say, just the standard uh, SIG Energy EV charger? Look, it, it's, it's not just about the bi-directional uh, feature, I get into that, but it's, it's also about the DC charging. Okay. Right? The reason why we can go to 12.5 and 25 is because we are using DC power to charge the vehicle as well. Like the limitations that you have with your standard 7 kilowatt single phase AC charger is that normal you can not pull that much power on single phase, but all of what we are doing with DC is happening behind the meter. So you are using your PV power and your batteries to charge your vehicle. The, you don't need to import anything from the grid. As a last resource, the charger can work with the energy controller and import from the grid if necessary. So there is a scenario where you can be using PV power, battery, 
and grid to charge your vehicle. So, so this is one advantage of the charger. The bidirectional feature, obviously, if you are interested on in pulling power from your vehicle into the house or into the grid, this is where a bidirectional charger comes in play. In, in terms of compatibility, we, we have a list on our website that vehicles and brands that have been tested, homeowners can refer to that. However, the, the industry is at a stage that bidirectional is new for everyone. It's also dependent on the software of the vehicle. You have all of this information in, in our website as well. So ideally what you want with a bidirectional charger is extend the storage of your system through the vehicle. And then you, you use that storage as you need for the house or for the grid. So just so I've got it clear for end users, um, would I need five battery stacks in order to be able to provide the full 25 kilowatts discharge to the car? Is there a number of battery packs that you would need to get the full capability of bi-directional EV charging? So if I well, want to put power into the car to start off with? Well, yes and no. So, so 12.5 or 25 kilowatts are, is the capacity of the charger. You, you need to give the charger the, the source of power. So that could be, if you want that only from the batteries, then yes, you, you will need probably six, uh, sorry, five battery packs to get to that capacity. But you could have, depending on the size of your energy controller, you could have 20 kilowatts of power or, or more from the PV. So in, in that scenario, your, your battery is irrelevant. Okay. Because th there is enough PV available, no need to use the batteries. And, and the same could be with the grid. It could, you could find yourself in a scenario where there is no PV at night, for example, and for whatever reason your batteries are depleted. You could pull, though, from the, assuming you are allowed the import, you could pull fr from the grid. This will be likely on a three-phase scenario. So if you have a 12 kilowatt single phase controller on a domestic property, or if I have a 30 kilowatt, for example, the biggest three Yeah, new one coming, cumin. Yeah. So, so let's say I've got a 12 kilowatt controller, would I be right in saying, via the bi-directional e DC charger, I could charge my car at 12 instead of seven, is that right? Yes, yeah, they, because they, if you have uh, a 25 or a 12, you will be able to pull, but again, it, what, what you need is to make sure that the charger has a source of power to get those 12 or 25, and that could be PV, battery or grid, or any combination of those, those three, basically. And I think the most exciting thing about this is and I think what users kind of get their head around is we're kind of used to just putting power into the car with this bi-directional EV charger with compatible models like Kia, Hyundai, I've yeah. seen a few that are starting to yeah, roll yeah, in. Yeah. Some of the mainstream brands that people know and are aware of can take power out of your car, providing they're bi-directional ready. If you can use your car as yeah. a battery pack during peak times. If, if you have the, the, the discharge rate, yeah, it will be exactly that. Like, like I say, it will be an extension of your battery system. So that's really useful if people got big uh, PV systems where they may be restricted on a grid export, I suppose, or where they're kind of thinking, well, the cost is racking up. I've already got a few battery packs. I've got a big controller. Actually, instead of buying more battery storage, I could just buy a bi-directional EV charger. Yeah, they might be a little bit more, but they can draw power in from the car and essentially meet their home demand. Correct, yeah. So I've got two more questions. Yeah. One of which is about the microinverter to the side. Yes, yes. I'll be honest with you, because they've got a built-in inverter and because they fire up at such a low voltage, I've, I've never actually fitted one of the microinverters. So I've got a lot of users effectively where they might not know what this product is, but they may well have a use case for it. So could you give us an idea of what it is and how it yeah. works within the ecosystem? What we wanted to achieve with SIG Energy, especially with the science store for residential applications is flexibility. You, you, you can have the system that, that, that you want. Uh, battery ready, small storage, large storage, with EV charger, without EV charger, EV DC charging, AC charging, and now we have the microinverter. So first of all, I mean, the most basic answer to this, you use microinverters. If, if you feel like that, that technology is for you, because there is some, so many users that are uh, keen on the idea of a microinverter, so this is why this is in the first place this year. Compatibility with the science store is additional. You could have your PV modules connected to your microinverters or to the science store or both. There is a scenario where you could have your PV modules connected to the science store, to the energy controller specifically, and then those modules that are in shade, you connect to microinverters, and then you have a parallel system. So the microinverters will be in the same system as the science store and everything will work in harmony. This is, this is the idea. 
Uh, one of the advantages of our microinverter is that the, the integration with the science store is seamless. There is no a communication gateway. They, they communicate, there is a Wi-Fi mesh. You just only need to make sure one microinverter is connected to Wi-Fi and then the, the Wi-Fi mesh will expand to all of those other microinverters. So the commission and the installation is a lot more simpler. We wanted to bring a similar experience to the microinverter sector, let's put it that way, to what we did with the science store, making that installation very simple. So effectively, I could have a random roof and I could go, actually, I've got a random panel there. I could pick that up with a microinverter without having any complex controls. I can just buy one of those units, put it on the back of the panel and that could Correct. work independently. Um, if I run out of PowerPoint trackers and I have the, so I've now kitted my kit out and I, go, yes. I want a load of extra yeah. panels on a roof. It would be the case that I could go, actually, I've run out of capacity here, but I can make the most Correct. of the micro-inverter. Uh, assuming you also have a gateway, you and, and then everything will be connected into the gateway. Like you could add another uh, breaker in this case, then connect the micro-inverters in, in one input and the science or in another input. And, and it could everything all work will be Exactly. So that's really interesting, because that could potentially prevent, if you wanted a couple of extra panels once you've had it kitted out, that could potentially prevent any big expensive costs, which I think users always like the look of. I think the other application that goes through my mind is a commercial, I've got a commercial building um, where they've got multiple uh, solar panels on an array and they want rapid shutdown. There's yes, the site, Sitesig Energy microinverter do rapid shutdown yeah. as well. So if I've got a vast array, I'm on a primary school, for example, and I want to use this kit, I can you, use you can, The microinverter will be a solution for that. Well, Lewis, I've learned so much today with you. Yeah. I'm so grateful for you taking the time out as a director of SIG Energy to explain some of these features that I quite couldn't quite get my head around or have not, we've not used ourselves. So be excited to use these products in the future. Thank you so much for right. taking the Thanks time. Thanks to you. Thanks Cheers. for Thank yeah, you. Bye bye. So this is a Shelley device. In particular, it's this one that's of use to maybe you in your home. So these can divert uh, smart lighting and a few other cool features that will work alongside your side energy system. But where I think our users of this kit will use these Shelley devices is alongside a hot water tank. So with a smart port on a gateway, effectively your SIG Energy Sigen store can communicate with one of these Shelly devices by Wi-Fi and divert any excess solar energy out to your hot water tank. But the thing that's really, really cool about these Shelly devices is they're about 30 to 50 quid, depending on which one you want to go and buy. So unlike your My Energy Eddy, that's a traditional hot water a diverter that's 750 pounds and often a fair bit of consideration, for probably 50 quid's worth of time and 50 quid's worth of a part, you can set up hot water divert into your hot water tank. Now, if you're particularly prone to power outages at your home, what this could mean is you can go completely off grid and still heat your hot water system. So effectively stay days on end and nothing really changes in the house. You have hot water, you've got energy in abundance and it's only done by a really tiny device. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch us on this SIG Energy Sigen Store deep dive. And I'm really grateful to Lewis for his time here and taking that time up. Thank you so much.